Good morning. Um, today is Friday, March 6th. This is going to be a little bit different episode. I am in a little bit of a crazy life transition right now and today is a stressful day so I'm, I'm trying to squeeze this in a little bit off the cuff and I'm going to do my best but I don't really have a whole lot of time to record. So um, the reason being we are selling our house, um, which was a really hard decision. It's been a long time coming in some senses, but it was also sort of a last minute thing that we just kind of came to last month. It started off with my husband and I having like a heart to heart about like projects that we wanted to work on here this year and just sort of slowly realizing that um, our heart wasn't in working on projects here anymore. And what we were really wanting to do was to start that homesteading life essentially. So. Um, we have been sort of waiting on doing that for a long time for a lot of reasons. Uh, we know where we're going to end up someday. Um, and we've been kind of gearing ourselves up for that for a long time. We're doing, doing a lot of research and just doing the best we can here, um, in the meantime. But, um, we just, we just decided that we're going to have to take a step between then and now into into that lifestyle because we've just put so much energy and time into um, dreaming about that that I'm I guess I'm in a phase right now and he is too where like we don't want to wait around we want to get started so it was mid-February we were like okay let's just get a realtor and start taking steps we, it doesn't, doesn't have to go fast we can like make sure it's perfect we can take our time with this um, and <laughs> One week later, we had put in a contingent offer and it was accepted. So um, the house that we put an offer in is uh, not cute and needs a lot of work. <laughs> so um, it's definitely going to be a big project house for us. Um, and it's on some acreage and but it's in the perfect location. And um, I don't know, I'm just really excited to share all about that. I, I think that I'm going to be doing a lot of documenting with that and probably sharing on YouTube. So um, that being said, nothing is set in stone. Like I said, it's a contingent offer and it's contingent on us selling this house. And, you know, there's with house hunting and selling, there's like all these hiccups that you can run into. We've already run into some. Um, and it, it often takes just way too long, <laughs> even when it goes fast. So um, yeah, we listed our house last night and we've got like five tours happening today, um, starting in about an hour and a half. So I'm just really, I, I figured if I don't record today, I don't know when I'm going to get the chance to. So, um, anyway, <laughs> that's the news. I've been kind of talking about it a little bit, but being vague about it, I guess, because I didn't want to. You just never know what's going to happen. Um, but I figured since we've listed the house, it's just, it is what it is. And this is where a lot of our heart and energy is going right now. And so I'm just going to talk about it. And, you know, if something happens, it falls through, whatever. It, it's all part of the process. Um, but yeah, so that's what's going on. That being said, I've actually done quite a bit of knitting um, in the past couple weeks. And... Um, I've done some dyeing too, so I thought I'd share with you. So I have two finished objects, and the first one is the Vuono hat by Ronya Hakaledo. So in the last episode, I had the brim knit up um, in different yarn. I was using one skein of a marigold dyed uh, non superwash merino and then one skin of like a dusty pink mohair silk um, and as I was looking at it I decided that I wasn't really loving the color that was coming out of it this is it and I just didn't really like it because it wasn't a very defined color and it wasn't gray and it wasn't beige and it wasn't mauve it just um, it was just an experiment and I I didn't really love it um, so I switched out the skein of non superwash merino that was dyed with marigolds with one that was dyed with um something else i think maybe an avocado and matter exhaust or something like that so it was closer in color to the mohair silk 
and it's a really subtle difference but this one is a kind of a brighter sort of more clean pink color than this one which has got kind of a green cast to it so I'm just really happy with the color I'm happy with how it turned out I think it's a beautiful pattern um, I would try it on but it's still wet from blocking um, as I said like I was uh, not planning on recording an episode today. I was going to do it later this weekend and this was supposed to be dry. So um, Yeah, it's not not there and I don't want to like stretch it out or anything by putting it on But hopefully I can insert like a video or some clips or something of me wearing it, but it's a it's a beautiful Pattern. Um, I love the stitch pattern that sort of braided look um, It's so soft and cozy. I've worn it quite a bit before I blocked it and it's, it doesn't itch me or anything um, and it's just really warm. And typically for me, because I have kind of big curly hair, um, when I knit hats they're usually really big and slouchy, um, but this is more of a fitted uh, hat for me. I could have gone longer or bigger but I decided that I wanted to just have like one hat that was a little bit more fitted because um, I'm thinking of the future and like home sitting and being outside and like wanting to have warm cozy hats and, and it were for like the winter tours and stuff so um yeah anyway I really recommend this pattern it's intuitive it's meditative it's it's very once you get that stitch pattern going it's really really um addictive and I had a hard time stopping here's the crown decreases So my second finished object is this pair of socks um, and it's just another one of those um, sport weight socks that I've been making for the last couple of episodes um, where I hold two strands of fingering weight sock yarn together and I again I just I can't get enough of these socks they are so quick to knit they fit better than any other sock I've ever made. I have always done really well with a heel flap and gusset, but occasionally when I have knit um, just normal socks uh, and fingering weight um, yarn, um, occasionally I'll run into a sock problem where like the heel wants to kind of slip and I'm constantly like pulling one of them up all day or whatever. Um, I've knit I think now four or five pairs of these and I wear them multiple times before I wash them. Like this pair I'm wearing right now, I think I've worn them four times, maybe five times. You guys are knitters, you know that you can wear wool socks multiple times before it gets, the, before you need to wash it. Um, but other people probably think that's kind of gross. Um, it's not. <laughs> and even if they get just a smidge loose, they still stay on my foot really well. They don't try to slip down. Um, yeah, and they're really durable. I haven't, um, I have worn the heck out of every single pair that I've knit for myself this winter. Like in shoes, barefoot around the house all day, just I've worn the heck out of them. And I don't I don't have any signs of a hole yet or anything. So um, yeah, I, I cannot recommend these thicker weight socks enough. I don't know if I were to use just a sport weight yarn, if it would be as durable. Sometimes I think that the fabric is different when you hold like two strands together versus you know to make a sport weight versus using just a sport weight yarn um i think i want to experiment with that a little bit but uh there's something about the durability of these and the, like there's a little bit of a stiffness to them um that really works well so and this one i just used scrap yarn um i didn't have enough of any one color so i just decided to make a scrappy pair and so I've got two strands the whole way through um, and I just, I would hold two strands and then only switch out one color and then only switch out one color here and then I kind of went back and like did the, the reverse of what I did up, up top and, um, and then I did uh, toe decreases and Kitchener graft and um, I, I do have some notes for how I make my socks on uh, Ravelry. Um, I will try to make them more detailed because a lot of people have been asking me 
for more detailed notes. Um, I, I don't really want to write a pattern for this because it's just, it's just a really simple, if you know how to knit a sock, this will be really intuitive for you. Um, but I can try to make it a little bit more detailed for people who are beginners. And so, um, I'll work on that, but I, it's, it's, I'm not a designer. I just, every once in a while make things that are, it's a little off the cuff and I don't think that it's, um, and pr there probably already is a pattern for this out here, out there somewhere. So I don't know, but I think the key to these socks for me is honestly the garter heel. I think that's what makes it so, um, cozy and what helps it grip my foot so well. Um, Heel flap and gusset has always been the best sock heel for me. Um, and to make it a garter version of that is has always worked. Every time I do it, it works, even when I'm using fingering weight. So um, I, I might try to experiment with a pair of these using a stockinette or a different type of um, heel, but it's almost one of those things where it's like, it works, why would I mess with it? So... Anyway, another pair of socks off the needles. So for um, my first work in progress, uh, my daughter approached me while I was making my uh, pair of socks that I just showed you and she asked me if I would make her a pair. And it's been a while since I made her any socks. So um, the first pair of socks I made her, it was a fingering weight pair. It was just a simple, vanilla sock pattern and although she liked it and it fit um, it was really hard for her to get it over her her heel and so they just didn't get worn very often so I was like I don't know if I want to knit this kid any socks because she's growing like a weed and you know if it's not going to be something that she's wearing a lot then it just might not be worth it so um but when she asked about making her another pair I realized that I hadn't made her one of these thicker, quicker um, socks. And um, so I went ahead and cast it on for um, one of those and it fits her really well. She's already, she can slip this one on and off her foot really easily. And um, again, it's got like all the elements of my other socks, my other thicker weight socks, but it's just um, for a five-year-old. So I'm gonna go ahead and share the numbers and the notes for all of this on um, my Ravelry page, um, make a project page for this. Um, and yeah, she's able to get this one on and off really easily. Um, this yarn is one of my early natural dye experiments with Logwood. It's on a non-superwash merino. This is not a sock yarn. Um, so it will be interesting to see how um, how this wears for her. Uh, I imagine she's not particularly hard on her socks because uh, she's so little, but we'll see. And I've kind of lost my fear of knitting with non-superwash sock yarns now because we've nixed um, machine washing all of our socks because I just knew I would eventually want to transition into using yarns that weren't superwash for my socks. So now we just put them in a um, bucket or something and every two weeks or so I do a big um, a big load of washing in the bathtub uh, with wool wash with all of our woolies and then I hang them out to dry and then we've got them again. So um, I think it's just been a really good thing for us to learn to put anything wooly in its own separate like laundry area um, because we've gotten to the point where everybody in this family has enough woolies that um, it's worth doing that and we wear them often enough too. Um, so yeah I've got this one and, and then I'm pretty far through the second sock. I, I am still in the process of doing the decreases uh, for the instep and um, yeah it's not going to take me very long to finish this at all I'll probably be done with this one uh, by the end of the night um, but yeah as for the natural dye aspect of this I dyed it with logwood and then this is one of the ones that I 
tried to modify with iron, but for whatever reason, um, the result wasn't that much different from the the non-iron modified color. So I sold the two skeins that were not modified with iron and I kept this one. And I am just really happy to be able to have something to do with all this yarn <laughs> that I dyed. Um, yeah, they're all going to socks, basically. I have some wild colors coming up that I need to do something with like neon yellow and green and stuff. So that should be fun. I don't know who's gonna get those socks, but they're definitely out of my color comfort zone, so. Um, I have for a really, really long time had a the Acer Cardigan by Amy uh, Christofferson. Christofferson? I don't, I'm not sure how you pronounce her last name. Um, but it's in, it's been in my queue forever. And um, it's, a, it's an old pattern and um, I don't know, I don't really see people knitting old patterns very often, so. Um, but I just decided to go ahead and cast on for it in my green yarn, which this green yarn has had um, different designations. Um, I thought it was going to be a pullover for a while, and then I thought it was going to be a different cardigan for a while, but um, this was just kind of a spontaneous cast on, and I, um, I'm really liking it. It is a bit lacier than I anticipated. Um, I don't know if you can see sort of the lace, yeah, you can see that. Um, it's it's a little bit lacier than I anticipated. Of course, this is, um, this yarn is Brooklyn Tweed Shelter, the worsted weight yarn, and from my experience with um, all Brooklyn Tweed yarns, they bloom beautifully, so I, I'm sure it will still continue to be lacy, but um, I think it will work really nicely, and it just might be one of those cardigans that I have to wear um, with a dark uh, shirt under it because I have a pet peeve against like lacy tops over like white um, or something where you can see the holes really well. It's just, I don't personally like the way that looks on me. So I was a little bit intimidated because um, if you've been following along since I had my baby who's almost a year old, then you know that I've been like just all about the really simple quick knits lately. Um, thicker bulky weight yarn and um, just like my, my all my socks, the thicker weight socks. Uh, that's just been my, my jam because my knitting is sporadic and in segments and it's like I don't really get the time to do like long stretches like I used to. Um, so I was a little bit intimidated uh, to do this because it's got cables and um, it's a little bit more complicated of a knit but the pattern is very intuitive easy to memorize um and it's just not nearly as complicated as i thought it was going to be so um i've been just plugging away at this every evening i do like six rows or so um on the body and uh it's been keeping me company and it's been keeping me warm because it's been it's still a little bit cold here um it's definitely spring here spring has arrived but there's still a chill in the air, so um, I, I don't think I will finish this um, in time to really get a lot of wear. It'll probably be uh, late spring. Well, I don't know. Honestly, with the whole house hunting situation, it's like there's you scramble, 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 and then you just have long periods of time where all you can do is wait. And so I find myself like nervously knitting. Um, so who knows, I might have it done in like a week. Probably not a week, but um, yeah. I'll show you, I have the pattern here. I'll try to show you a picture. Like it's black and white, so it's kind of hard to see, but um, she has it, this is back before like cropped cardigans and things were a thing. But it's not like a super long cardigan, uh, which I like. And so I might try to do like a little bit more of a cropped version of it. Um, yeah, it's an oldie, but a goodie. And I can't wait to have it done.
So believe it or not, I have actually had the time to do some natural dyeing, um, despite all the craziness. Because we cook mostly from home, what I find myself dyeing with mostly these days is food scraps. And I had this big giant bag of onion skins that I've been saving. And um, so I just went ahead and made up a dye pot. And I dyed some, this is a, a Merino Yak silk base. It's a gray. And so it, it uh, takes color differently. And it kind of turned this like rusty, um, I don't know, like a rusty color. And I love it so much. This is why I like dyeing over grays. Um, you just get muted colors, like they're not as bright. And I find that really beautiful. So um, I always get such interesting results with onions. Uh, I've had yarn go sort of a reddish green, if that makes any sense. I'll try to find like a picture or something of that. Um, it was a green that had like a, a red cast to it if you looked at it in certain lights. A lot of my onion dye experiments will go yellow, of course, sort of a mustardy yellow sometimes. And I've had kind of some reds go in here. And this is the first time that it's really gone more orange. And so I wanted to see what it would look like on a white base. So I used the exhaust of that dye bath and then added more from that bag and then dyed it over a, um, a targi, targi. Um, and it, sure enough, it turned yellow, sorry, orange. <laughs> Have I been saying yellow this whole time? Well, you guys can see, you know what I'm talking about. It turned orange. So I'll do a little side by side so you can see the difference between the gray base and the uh, the white base. Onions just never fail to surprise me. This yarn is still just a little bit wet. I've got it hanging up, uh, but these are dry. I have been dyeing quite a bit of yarn, and um, I, I still wouldn't say it's enough to have a shop update, but. Um, I'm not planning on stopping. Um, it's just the right season for it and it makes me, it's, it's another thing I can do to kind of pass the time while I'm waiting for <laughs> things to happen with, uh, selling the house and buying the new house. So, um, yeah, I look forward to sharing more experiments with you. Plus we have just, we're bursting with food scraps and we have a whole bunch of, uh, foraged items that my daughter's been bringing home when she goes to the forest and stuff too so um, I did want to quickly mention that um, the natural dye knit along is ending June 21st that still gives you plenty of time to participate if you haven't yet um, and it, it's been really fun seeing everybody's um, projects that they're sharing on both Ravelry and Instagram one thing I wanted to really quickly mention as we approach the uh, end date you know it's in a, like four months or something is that if you are wanting to donate a prize, the best way to get a hold of me is through my um, email account at a wooden nest at gmail.com. Um, sometimes I don't see the Ravelry messages and um, DMs on Instagram um, can be really weird sometimes and they get buried and or they go into a weird folder. So um, yeah, the best way to get a hold of me is to email me. That said, if you have emailed me and I haven't responded, it's because I didn't see it go through. Uh, so go ahead and please resend that email. Um, yeah, I've just been having a little bit of um, I've been having a little bit of technical difficulties with all that stuff. So I just wanted to clarify on the best way to get a hold of me. Um, yeah, I'm gonna have to wrap up right now because I gotta get going, and my phone is just kind of off the hook right now with people calling. <sighs> I have to say it feels very strange to have people coming through our home and we have loved this house uh, from the very beginning. It's an old home. It's a hundred years old this year. Um, my husband and I have put our own touches on every single room. We re-exposed the, the fur floorboards. They were all covered in carpet and weird tile and stuff like that. And, um, you know, we've just, we've done our best to kind of bring back its original charm. 
And so it's really hard for us to leave this place because uh, we basically got it to a point where I felt very comfortable here and very inspired and like it was basically perfect. So the idea of leaving it just it, is really hard. Like it, this has been a really good home for us. It's, it's our first home. It's the home that we had all um, both of our babies. And uh, yeah, it's just a hard decision. It was a hard decision to make, but we both know that um, we've outgrown it and we need some acreage and we have dreams that we really want to, we don't want to wait on anymore. So I don't know, please just wish us luck in this whole process. Um, no matter what happens, it's going to be, it's going to be for the best. So, uh, yep. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> this is a short episode, but, um, hopefully I will be back soon and, um, we'll have an update for you. Bye.